All right, so we've got a 94 Nissan Pathfinder, and this is bagged and body dropped with a uh, stock floor body drop, so it's a custom frame. I did not cut much of the floor. I've only cut where it needed it, and I will have to remove this dash and cut for the transmission. I've lowered this engine and transmission about half of an inch, and the hood barely shuts. And that transmission barely fits. This is going to be a five-speed with a four-cylinder, the KA24E, out of a 97 hard body. And so what I'm going to have to do is build a harness. I'm going to have to build the Pathfinder body harness with a four-cylinder engine harness. So wiring is my least favorite part of a vehicle and I have several of these so I got a 97 this is gonna be OBD2 and uh, so I've removed the harness and doing that I have removed the dash I've got all of the dash and all of the ductwork removed I pulled out some of the heater and air conditioner controls so that I can remove this harness. Being that I will have a completely different harness from basically cab back, I decided to just unhook that and not go under the truck and remove everything because uh, this truck is not going to have the things that I need. So I'm going to have to modify heavily on that anyway. So I'm going to try to keep the Pathfinder harness from there back. So it was easiest just to unplug that. All right, so I've used yellow. That's what I had, but ended up it's really bright. And I'm glad I did that so I can easily find my tags. I labeled almost every connection. And uh, most of this truck will get used. My daughter's truck, the key is messed up in hers and I will end up just removing this column this is like riveted on you can probably drill that and figure out a way to screw it back on but I'm probably going to just go ahead and swap the entire column into her truck and to keep one key I'll take the door locks out of this and put it in her truck as well our truck's a 97 this is a 97 but even if it was 87 i think it would still all fit so i pulled out all of the wiring from under the hood so everything just got relabeled now this is the rear o2 sensor i'm not even going to use the rear o2 sensor everything is going to be highly modified and I'm also going to remove emissions. Anything with a yellow harness or a yellow plug will be your airbag. And that is not going back in either. So this one, I've got these seats put back in, but I'm gonna have to pull all this out. Um, I really don't want to pull the dash out of this because these, to get off on these older dashes, I could possibly end up busting this dash. I really don't want to bust this dash. It's not, it's not a perfect dash, but these things are getting hard to get. And this one right now has no brakes at all in it. And I really don't want to make one. Right there is some stuff wrong with it, but it's not bad. Right there is a brake. So, anyway, these vents, the best way I can decide to get this up is to get a little pick and push and find the little clip. And once you find that little clip, you'll have to push in on it. And then you'll have one here, one near the middle, and then one on this end. The one on this end is close to the edge. And the one on this end is maybe an inch or inch and a half maybe from the edge. 
and that one is near the middle. You can't really see in there too good. That one's already trying to pop up. Come on, focus. There we go. Alright, so I've decided I'm going to go ahead and try to pull the dash out of the Pathfinder. And this is hanging down. I'm just going to go ahead and pull it out of the way because I'll be hitting my head on that. It's just been sitting around, so the sun probably got to that. But I'll just remove that. Set it back here. And uh, I'm not really looking forward to this. So, just kind of bear with me here. I'm going to just go ahead and remove the entire dash, and then I will label the harness, and then start removing the harness after that. The dash will have to come out anyway, because I've got to clearance all of this for the wheels to go. So, the key has to come out. I'll just put it in here in the ashtray. And this glove box is broke. Sometimes the clips on the back side, and I can feel it is broke down here. So you can't see it. I've got a light. I got struck by lightning, and my lights in my shop are kind of messed up. I don't have that fixed yet. So I've got a light, but it was dead. But there's these little things that you push out. You've got one on each side of your glove box. So, let's see if I can turn the. Yeah. All right. So that'll work. So I'll, I'm I'm gonna pull this one out. If I can get my hand in there. I'd have to use a flathead screwdriver if you can't get your hand in there. That might work. Yeah, alright, so then your glove box will tilt down and you can see my bracket is broke. So I'm going to try not to break this one, so I'm going to remove that screw right there. And whenever you drop that down, most of the time your parts will come out of your glove box but I got lucky it didn't do that this time so since mine's broke I can remove that one screw I don't have to remove that one right now and you just pick up on it and it slides right out set that right there I'm gonna pull all of these screws out and remove it and there's some screws up here and you don't have to remove two of these but one of them you do if I remember right but I don't remember which one it is it might be that metal one that you do have to remove I'm gonna pull all of this out and then there are two screws one and two that holds this on and you can go ahead and pull these off those will have to come off, so I'm just going to grab those now. And then on the back side, this is defrost. Um, probably the back glass, possibly mirrors. The trucks generally don't have that, so you may not have to deal with that. And you will have to unplug these from the back side. And sometimes it's easier. You can push those out from the back. If you can't get to the plug, then a lot of times you can just push them out and then unplug it once it's out. And it just clips down here. Just remove this ashtray. And then you can pull it out easier. Just be careful not to break it because it does clip down here. I'll cut you back on in a minute. I got that out. Now what I'm going to do is remove this screw to pull this piece off. And there is a screw down on bottom as well. And this just pops in and out after those two screws are removed. And I will then come over here and I will remove this column cover. 
so that comes off and then you'll have the screws in the bottom of the column cover the se trucks and the pathfinders have this column cover and the regular um, even the some of the X, SEs, all the XEs and the base models will have a different cover than this. This is a tilt. Right there is the tilt for these. If it's got tilt, it will have this column cover, basically. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that cover and then uh, remove this black piece that goes around the gauges. There will be two screws on top to remove it. And be careful with all of this not to break it as you pull it. This will be clipped in the bottom. Actually, it may have more screws. I may have to remove this piece. I remember now. So, this piece will have a screw right here. And then a screw right there. So, next I'm going to unplug this. And then I will label that. I have these labeled. Just uh, label these how you know where they go back and we will look up in here so what a mess um, I'm not looking forward to fixing all of this so I'm gonna remove that screw and then be very careful getting that vent out there's a bolt in behind that vent that I will have to remove and this black piece that goes around your gauges it does have screws down here and it does have screws up here so I'm going to remove all of those and I will remove that screw and I will remove this piece on the bottom with that screw I will remove these to get this piece out that one to get that piece out and there will be one here and I thought there was one right here but maybe not so then we will be able to get this piece off and get to our gauges and remove the four screws for that I'll cut you back on I went to pull this piece off and I realized that the heater and air controls are attached to that so this black piece just pops off and there will be screws in behind there to remove that from that. So now I'm going to take this off and then I can pull this and set that with it over beside the vehicle. So next I'm going to remove the gauges so there will be two screws on bottom and then two screws on top. There should be four plugs in behind that and you just pull those plugs off and I'm going to label those gauges so that I know where they go back. I was being very careful but this piece uh, it still broke. So I have this top piece and here is my bottom piece. It was already cracked so then it busted off the other end. I'm going to see if I have another one or glue this one or do what I can with that so I can't get the vent out. It is stuck. But right there is the bolt that we need. We'll have to remove that bolt right there to get the dash out. So I'll cut you back on in a minute. So at some point somebody has cut my wires that go up to my light for my glove box and instead of unplugging it I don't know why they did that I'll fix that whenever I fix this harness or whenever I put it back in one or the other so what I'm going to do is just label this what it is it's glove box and I'm gonna start unplugging some of these plugs right here and labeling some of this stuff as I go and um, I'm gonna remove well that bolts already gone and I went ahead and pulled the bolt over here so the bottom of this dash should be loose 
right here is the gauge cluster so you have to just push the together and it will pop out you can just do that with your fingers push both sides and then just push it out that way the harness will be removed from the dash and you don't hang up on anything as you try to remove this from the vehicle and what I'm dreading is pulling these off so I'll get to that here in just a minute I'll cut you back on all right so to get the dash out these a pillar covers have to come off so they don't have screws you can just take a flathead screwdriver if you can get it in there Sometimes you may have to remove this little rubber seal to make it easier on you. But they just unclip one, two, and three, and then the bottom falls into a little groove. So when you go to put it back on, you'll want to stick that in that slot and then just rotate it back up and fit it back into its little springy holders. And I'm going to remove that one. And then I will look at removing these feathers right here. Alright, so I've got my light. And it's pretty bright. And also, it's a beautiful day. And uh, whenever I went out to get these, I noticed it was a beautiful day. These were in the back of my parts truck. So I've also rolled up my garage door so I can get some daylight in here. Some of these had a security system and that's probably what that was for. The Pathfinder got that. I don't know. That actually might be uh, some of the HVAC uh, temperature reading. I don't know. Most likely it was a, a, a light to show that it had a security system. But this one may not have had that option, but the Pathfinder may have went ahead and got that piece. But anyway, the clips will always have this on the front. So I know this is the front, or the direction that that sits. So I'm going to have a clip here that is already unclipped. And then if you don't have a set of these laying around, then try to use what I've got here as reference you can count these over if you pause or something you can count that over and then figure out exactly where these are so you can push them without cracking your dash so I'm going to attempt now I'm gonna need two hands so I'm gonna put you on pause while I do this and I'm gonna attempt to come down in here I'll show you on this one that's not long enough so maybe a flathead that's awful big I'm gonna find me a smaller flathead all right so most likely this little orange handled one is gonna be the one that I'll use it's pretty thin flat little flathead but I've got these other ones so I'm going to get up in here and see what I can do without without damaging this dash I'll cut you back on in a second all right so I really feel like I got lucky on this middle one it just popped out that's kind of probably what it needs to they these things stay on way too stiff they're strong they don't need to go on like that like literally you you have to fight to get them off like pry the crap out of them so I'm gonna move on to my next one um, got to figure out which one of these sometimes on the back side of the stuff will have an R or an L there's an R so this will be the right so we can line this one up and if you want you can see that one is right there. And this one, you can 
count over. All right, and this one is right there. All right, I'll pause you while I do this. All right. There we go. All right, so this actually just popped right off as well. I don't know what's going on because I've never had them do this before. But it can't be the tools that I'm using because I've used all kinds of tools on these. But I am using this pick right here. And I'm not even getting down to the tab. I'm getting down just almost to the tab here and it'll just pop loose. So hopefully this third one will be the same way. And hopefully for you guys as well. So I'll cut you back on in a minute. And here we go for the third one. So to know where that is for you guys, that is where the tab is. And the middle tab you can count over if you like. From that solid spot over will be right there. And then this end one over here is right there. All right, I'll cut you back, back on in a second. All right, I feel like I had great success with that. So I used this two right here, a little bitty flathead, and this little pick. And I just worked down in there and it popped loose. It was a lot tighter than the other two, but I did not damage anything getting that one out either. So now what I'm going to do is pull this bolt and I'll use a 10 millimeter on these I'll have one here one here not that one but that one and then one there and then this dash will come out so these wires that I have here will need to be tucked up in there so like that Bruce Jenner and we will tuck those up in there and then once those are out the dash will come out if you have a tilt column then you just take that down that steering wheel down and it will come out or you could just take your entire column loose with the bolts one on each side right there and right there and you'll drop your whole column which this column has to come down anyway i might just go ahead and drop it i have to weld in that black piece right there i had to cut out and raise this column because i did the body drop i'll go ahead and yank this dash and i'll cut you back on all right so i'm gonna go ahead and tell you when you put this dash back in these pieces on the end will have to be pulled out because they have to slide back down into this. Those are what defrosts for your mirror and defogs. And since mine was all busted up now, the dash is out, I can flip this over and I can push that vent out from this inside. And of course it fell out after me prying on it and it wouldn't come out. Of course it just falls out now. So what a piece of crap the wind's getting my door i need a heavier block i guess that was kind of scary for a second sounded like a wolf over there trying to come at me i don't have a gun on me right now i'm in my shop i shouldn't have to carry a gun in my own shop all right so now what i'm gonna do is remove some of this duct work but I got to get all this dash pulled out of my way. So I'll cut you back on. Okay, so I don't know what this is. The trucks don't have this. That is possibly a tweeter wire because some of these had tweeters. It appears that it probably is. The trucks don't have them. Um, there is something was mounted here. I'm going to assume that that was just a tweeter and somebody has cut the wire for that tweeter. This here, I'm not sure what that is. It's just kind of dangling down. 
but it doesn't go anywhere. But it doesn't. I don't know. It's only one wire. I don't know what that is. Um, these are made to where you can just pull that and pull that off. And you can reuse these zip ties. And just figure out some of this stuff, how to pull it off where it goes back. I'm not doing a very good job filming. I need a tripod or something. I've got a tripod. This video will be two hours long if I should video it. I guess I could speed up the video. But anyway, so I am going to figure out how to undo that and pull some of this wire back and label some of these wires as I go. These screws generally aren't very tight. That's just holding your ductwork in. Now this one is going to hold that frame on and that frame does have to come off. So those are tight. I'm just going to go ahead and start removing a bunch of screws and bolts and remove this ductwork. And I will also remove this. Um, Ninety seven didn't have that. I'm trying to figure out why. I don't guess it matters. But okay, so I'm just gonna remove that and remove this little cradle thing here and remove this ductwork. But you have this one going that direction. This video will help me as much as it helps you, I think. Then the big long one goes like this. I'm going to probably use this as reference to reassemble this this uh, ductwork. And then this one has a big bend. It comes back around and then another bend to come in the middle. This one is not as great of a bend. And it goes into the blower motor right here actually that is the blower motor and these have bolts under here like this and this so I'm going to go ahead and pull those bolts out and remove some of this stuff because I have got to beat that in and cut it out and weld back a lot right here so I'll cut you back on in a minute so now I'm going to remove the bolts here on top that hold some of this in basically just these two boxes and then pull the bolts out of the bottom and unplug these label these plugs where they go and pull all that out of the way so that these boxes will drop out of here and there is a plug down here I'll have to unplug all right I'll cut you back on in a second all right so in order to get that box out you have to take these lines loose and my bottom one was already loose I'm gonna take this top one loose and then I'm going to take this 10 millimeter bolt out there's a metal plate right here and then the rubber will come off of these lines and then it'll just all slide right out it's pretty easy so there is what you have to remove this just fits around the lines it's slit so they just comes right off and when you put it back on Keep note, there's a larger line and a smaller line, and it's pretty easy. I'm just going to set this over here. Now, our firewall has large enough holes where that will just slide right out. I'm going to try to keep up with this little O-ring that is on here. And figure out the next step. We'll just pull these boxes out and then... Look at what we got. Should 
just fall right out now with two hands maybe it's getting caught right there but the hole is large enough this just comes right out I just need two hands all right I'll cut you back on all right so that is my tire and now it's obvious if y'all were wondering why I was saying I was gonna have to cut and weld all of this is going to get cut out and a trailer fender put back in and I'm going to start my floor here to make it easier to get into my shock absorber <clears throat> so I can remove my shock absorber without having to fight the body at this point I think I'm going to look at these plugs and see if the truck harness I don't remember all of this in the truck I think this has got way more stuff so I'm going to start looking at that and go from there I can start removing all of these screws and pulling some of this out where did that one go I didn't label it I don't remember unplugging that I'm going to look at things like that to make sure I've got all this labeled correctly and that may not have went anywhere sometimes you can look and see if there's dirt on this if it's an older vehicle or if it looks like it has slide marks I see dirt and I don't see you can hold that into the light you can see if it looks scratched like it slid into something I'm seeing dirt and I'm not seeing scratch marks I really don't think this was plugged into anything. Um, so a lot of this stuff I make up as I go, obviously. And uh, and you're, when you're building something full custom, you basically have to do that regardless. So, and I can tell whenever I have clearance for this tire, this wiring harness cannot fit there. It's going to have to go somewhere else. I may end up having to cut this big plate plastic stuff off and uh, figure out another way of mounting that solid without that big plastic piece on it or maybe even cut that plastic down, make a new hole and bring it over. It just needs to be out of the way of that. I do want to keep this mounting point because that kind of needs to go back where it's at. So. We'll kind of go through that as we get to it. And uh, I'm going to start looking at this harness, I guess. So this is the truck harness. <clears throat> this is at the firewall. I know that's where it comes to the firewall. This is that plastic piece, and I had all of those plugs right here. This does not have a single plug. So that is completely different. Actually, the plugs were on this one because that goes under the seat to the computer. So the plugs would have been on this line. But there's not a plug anywhere on it. And it goes all up into the dash. That's what goes in behind the dash. There's not one plug. So I was correct on that. I guess I will have to try to figure out what I've got going on and uh, I'll cut you back on in a little bit all right one thing I figured out pretty quickly this is the antenna that plugs into the radio and you follow this wire back and it goes to the antenna mounted on the um, fender right there and it comes up over here the wire that I did not know what it was it went to nothing that is supposed to plug into the windshield so this windshield does not have an antenna built in it and that's why it goes to nothing so one wire figured out you just have to take these one thing at a time here so what I'm gonna do is shave my fender I'm not gonna run an antenna on the fender I'm probably not going to be able to pick up a radio station, but that is okay. This wire can be completely removed. 
one wire out of the equation. Like a hundred million left to go, but we'll get there. All right, so at this point, I think I'm going to try to chase some wire colors that uh, go to body and then see if I can just remove out of this the V6 engine harness going to the computer and add back in the four cylinder harness and leave everything else. This is one wire that I do not need. This is for the factory fog lights, driving lights. And it was all up in here, tangled all up in that. So it actually comes in through the firewall right here. I don't need that. I am removing it now. And that will be, that will make it a little bit simpler. I don't have a lot of room in here to work. This is not what I'd planned on doing. I'm waiting on parts for a vehicle so this is uh that's what I'm doing so now I'm going to crawl up in here and find out where that wire harness it is this one so I can just remove this and the purple wire has been fed into looks like where the blinkers come in I'll just unhook that purple wire there and this harness will be completely removed. This was the switch that they had. This was factory, but that connection is not factory. I'm not sure what they had going on there. Maybe it was a jumper because something failed on them. But I'm going to see if I can remove that. All right, cut you back on. Okay, so about a day has gone by. I was kind of stressing over this, and what I've decided now to do is I'm going to remove the entire harness out of the Pathfinder. What's inside here, what goes underneath. It appears that I've laid frame on this harness because I can't pull it out. And I know it's not connected to anything down there, so it has to be laying frame on it. So I will lift the vehicle and pull that out. And I'm going to remove all of the harness from out of here. While I've got it raised, I can just pull it through that hole that I have. And once that is out, I will then pull... This harness, I've got my lights off in here, but I will pull this harness back in through the engine bay. I'm going to cut all of the wire loom off and weed through, remove emission plugs, and lengthen, shorten, whatever I've got to do with some of the other wiring. What I'm going to try to do is keep this inside under the dash instead of on the firewall because I basically will not have room for that and this is the truck harness and this is the plug that goes to the back it'll go to the uh, I believe that goes to the analog brakes but I know it will go to the uh, gas tank the sending unit fuel pump and the tail lights brake lights all of that blinkers and all so um that plug is different than the one for the pathfinder and it plugs in one of these two it plugs in this one but i'm going to pull this out which i will probably end up pulling the bed off and this bed is full of junk. I might be able to get away with just lifting the bed up. The gas tank may have to come out because that harness is tucked up in here. It would be easier to pull the bed than to pull the fuel tank. So I kind of might need that hose right there anyway. 
before the Pathfinder. I went ahead and pulled all of the harness back out of that parts truck. I couldn't get the bed off easily, so it was easier for me to just unhook everything from the frame. And once I got that harness out, the one plug that was next to that plug where it goes through the floor, that plug actually did come over and connect to this harness. So the yellow we don't need, but it did come over and connect. So we will keep that. I got these bugs flying around everywhere. So the ABS we're not going to need. Fuel pump we will need. And we have some emissions and some more analog brake system here. ABS stuff. And then we will have our tail lights. Definitely keeping those, of course. All right, so now we have a complete harness. I'm gonna have to work on this truck for my customer. Um, I was getting burned out and I spent half the day yesterday and half of the day today. I built a patio out here and I probably should have taken a video of that while I was doing it because it was pretty cool. I've got this gantry that I use for picking up basically everything. I've put these rocks in. One of these rocks was 1,640 pounds when it crossed the scales whenever I bought those. And this was just a pile of rocks. And it was an eyesore. This was an outside, like a table. We had a swimming pool. And we just set our drinks and things on that swimming pool. And this plug was to power the... Uh, the pump and and salt water and everything on the pool and I had a building here that I tore down like a week ago and it had power in it so I cut the wire and I buried the line they've got like a silicone thing that you can put the wire down in after you put your caps on and it's supposed to be 100% waterproof so it's all buried so I still got power at that pole sometimes we have outside parties anyway I'm really wore out from pickaxing and shoveling. I am beat. I'm going to go ahead and call this a video here. And um, as I get time, I will make more video of this harness. This will definitely be the next step on this build because I've already started it and I really need to just get it done and get this red parts truck out of my yard um, back into where I store my parts and I have a I have a trailer back here that is on air I've got to get this trailer I don't have to but it's just in my way I built this trailer like 19 years ago and it's just in my way I've been mowing around it it doesn't really work right these back wheels go into a tow and they start scrubbing and it will peel the tread right off it just destroys rear tires the front's fine but that is a leading arm that's a trailing arm so you can't lead with those and expect your tires to last so i'm sick of mowing around this so what i'm going to do is load that red parts truck up on this bit on this uh on this trailer and i'll just take it all out to where i store my things and um anyway so it's got to get that bed off and i can do it while it's on that trailer really so i'm tempted just to grab that since my rocks are no longer in my way i can go back here and grab that trailer and move all of my stuff around and clean my yard up and then get to building on my customer's frame so, anyway, I'll hit you back up and with a new video on removing this harness and then installing the truck harness. So, alright, I'll catch you later and like, subscribe, whatever. Alright, talk to you later.